What's going on guys, Justin here, and welcome back to our 12th example video following our course on abstract algebra. Now, today's example video is going to be on the alternating group. So with my introduction out of the way, let's go ahead and get into our first example here. So this first example says, what are the possible orders of elements in A6 and A7? And then we also want to find an element of order 15 in A8. So right off the bat, I want to go ahead and note that by a theorem that we proved in the lecture video corresponding to this example video, we proved that any cycle of an odd length is even. That is to say we can express any cycle of odd length as a product of an even number of transpositions. Great. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and look at the possible orders for a six. Well, like I said, that gives us all of the odd numbered orders right off the bat. We have one, three, and five. Great, so just to give you a quick example of those, for an uh, element of order one, we have the identity element. For an uh, element of order three, we could just have any arbitrary three cycle, but let's just say one, two, and three. And similarly for, a, an, order, and similarly for an element of order five, we would have the five cycle, one, two, three, four, and five. Great, so next we have to consider the even orders for a six, and the possibilities for that will be two and four. And some examples of that would be for two, we can write two disjoint two cycles, we could write it as one, two, and three, four. And similarly, an element of order four would be the product of a two cycle and a four cycle, so we'll have one, two, and three, four, five, and six. Great, so moving on to A7, just like I said before, we are guaranteed to have elements of all of the odd numbered orders one to seven, so that takes care of one, three, five, and seven. And we can apply the exact same logic we did for A6 to elements of order two and four, so that takes care of those there. And we can also have elements of order six, so we can actually have elements of all orders one through seven in A7. Great. So now all we need to do is find an element of order 15 in A8. And an example of that element would be as follows. We would have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, as well, and 6, 7, 8. Great. So let's go ahead and get into our next example. So for our next example, we want to show that for all n greater than or equal to 4, A sub n is not abelian. So let's go ahead and suppose that we are dealing with n greater than or equal to 4. And then we want to consider the following three cycle. So let's go ahead and consider one, two, three, and two, three, four. Great. So let's see how we can write that. Well, starting with one here, if we pass one through that first three cycle, it will be fixed. And passing it through the second three cycle will give us a two. Then we pass a two through that first three cycle, it will go to three, but then three is set to one. So that will close this here. Then we'll go ahead and start with a three for this next cycle. So passing it through the first three cycle, we would get three is sent to four, but four is then fixed. So that will give us the two cycle one, two, and three, four. Next, we want to consider two, three, four, and one, two, three. So two, three, four, and one, two, three will give us the following. While well, starting with one, once again, we will have a one there, but one will be sent to two, and then two will be sent to three, so we will have one, three. Then passing three through the first three cycle, we'll send it to one, and then one is fixed by the second two cycles, so we will close our parentheses there. Then we'll start with two, two is sent to three, but three is sent to four, so then we will have two, four, and four will be fixed by the first three cycle, and then four will be sent back to two, so we close our parentheses there. So we can see here that these two uh, are not the same, thus we cannot commute. So I'll go ahead and write that we cannot commute. And this example will work for all n greater than or equal to four. Thus, I have proven through this one example that for all n greater than or equal to four, a sub n is not abelian. So let's go ahead and get into our next example. So for this one, we want to suppose that h is a subgroup of Sn. We wanna show that either every element of h is even or exactly half of the elements of h are even. So let's just go ahead and set this problem up. So we're gonna start by supposing that we have some subgroup, we'll call it big H, which is a subgroup of Sn. So from here, I can go ahead and say that if H has no odds, then it's all evens, and then we are done there. So we want to consider the case where H has some odd permutations here. So let's go ahead and let little h be an element in our subgroup big H. And we're going to let this little h be an odd permutation. So we're going to let little h be odd 
permutation, which I'll just abbreviate P-E-R-M. And then I want to consider the function as follows. So I want to consider the function F, which goes from our subgroup big H to our subgroup big H. And all this function is going to do is left multiply by our element little h. So I'll go ahead and write that here, which left multiplies by h. Great. And so from here, I want to note the following. I want to note that f is bijective. And that's, it's pretty clear it's injective because it has an inverse which is given by multiplying from the left by h inverse. And it's surjective because for all a, h prime in our big h, we can take f of h prime, we can take f of h inverse h prime and it will give us h. Great. So like I said, f is bijective. And so from here, I want to note the following about multiplying by an odd permutation. So I'm going to go ahead and note when we are multiplying by an odd permutation. And we have that odd permutations will become even. And we also have that even permutations will become odd. And so thus what this function does is it pairs each even function with exactly one odd function, which means it must be half even and half odd. So let me go ahead and write that down. So there we go, that finishes this problem off. So we suppose that our subgroup H had an odd permutation in it, and then we used this function to show that it must then be half odd and half even. Great, so let's go ahead and get into the next example. So for this one, we wanna show that A5 has 15 elements of order two, 20 elements of order three, and 24 elements of order five. So I want to note the following for elements of order two, three, and five. So for elements of order, so for elements of order two, they will be of the form A, B, C, D, where those are disjoint two cycles. So for elements of order three, we will have a three cycle A, B, and C. And then for elements of order five, we will have A, B, C, D, and E, where that is just a five cycle there. Great. So let's start with elements of order five. So for elements of order five, I want to note that we have five factorial choices or five factorial ways to choose uh, to choose our five cycle A, B, C, D, and E. But we have to consider there are cases where these five cycles will be exactly the same, and indeed there are exactly five ways to write five cycles that are the same, so we will need to divide by five. So our total number of order five elements in A5 will be five factorial over five, which is just equal to four factorial, which is equal to 24. So there we have verified that there are 24 elements of order five in A5. Great, so next let's look at elements of order three. So for order three elements, we will have exactly the same argument. We will have five times four times three choices for our three cycle and our three cycle is A, B, and C. But just like before, we will need to divide by the amount of repeated cases. So that'll give us a total of possible five times four times three all over three cases. And that's gonna be equal to just five times four or 20 cases for order three elements there. So lastly, we want to talk about our order two elements. And that is not quite as easy as it's not as easy to see how many ways there will it's not easy to see how many repeated elements there are, but let's go ahead and write out our possible choices. We will have five times four times three times two choices to represent our two disjoint two cycles, A, B, and C, D. But I want to go ahead and note the following. And that is in addition to dividing by four, disjoint two cycles commute, so we must divide by an extra two. So that means we will take our five times four times three times two choices, ways to choose A, B, C, and D, and divide by four, and divide by four times two, and that will give us simply a five and a three in our numerator there, and five times three is 15, so that'll give us 15 different possible order two choices here. Great, so that finishes this problem off. We proved that there are 24 elements of order five, 20 elements of order three, and 15 elements of order two. So let's go ahead and get to our next example. So for this last one, you want to, uh, so for this last one, I want to find subgroups of A5, which are isomorphic to D5 and S3. So I'm gonna go ahead and write down two subgroups of A5 that are isomorphic to those two, and I'm gonna leave it to you guys in the comments to do for homework to prove why those are isomorphic. So let me go ahead and write those out for you now. So first for our subgroup, which is isomorphic to D5, we have the group which is generated by one, the five cycle one, two, three, four, and five, as well as the product of the disjoint two cycles, two, five, and three, four. Great, and like I said, that will be equal to D5. 
And then for S3, we will have the group, which is generated by the three cycle one, two, and three, as well as the product of the cycles one, two, and four, five. And like I said, that is equal to S3. So I will leave it to you guys to prove that those are indeed subgroups of A5 that are isomorphic to D5 and S3, and make sure to post about it in the comments. So that finishes this last problem off, and that's a good place to stop.